Hello guys, long time no see, especially on this channel. This is all one take right here. I rarely ever do this, but it's the reason why I actually made the holdover vlog. This was supposed to be informal and easy for me to upload and edit. Uh, so now I'm gonna do it, and hopefully I'll be able to stay more consistent with this channel, so long as I don't burden myself with editing. So all we're doing right now is um, opening up a new gun. I know unboxing, it sucks, but I'm gonna give some commentary with this as well. It isn't just, oh, look at this thing, and it seems pretty cool, and oh, that's neat. No, we're going to talk about things. So, the new thing is right here. And I'm racing a little bit because winter has returned. Or at least summer's not here yet. And it's cold again. 40 degrees Fahrenheit and windy out here. So, here's what we got. It is the new FX... 9mm, 35.35 caliber, and I got a big old fat dotty here too, I don't know which model this is, which one is this, this is the Ronin, don't know if this comes with it or not, no idea, it's got a half inch, no that's not a half inch, that's the bigger one, which is appropriate given the size of that hole right there, <laughs> Refex held off a long time making larger calibers, because they didn't have the power and there is a balance, you know, to get it right. Don't want to overpower things. That didn't work out too well for the Wolverine. Um, and they demanded that be 100 foot-pounds. Um, FX said, no, we're going with 80 foot-pounds. And uh, they're right. So this one, I think I've heard 150 foot-pounds, which puts that 77 grain JSB Lunker pellet, which I don't have with me, sorry. Um, big beast. Uh, that makes that... <laughs> Um, 150 foot-pounds moving at 900 feet per second. Excuse me. Looks pretty boss, I gotta say. With the larger cylinder on here, uh, the power plenum here, and this can on the end, yeah, it's got a cool factor to it. So, uh, if I was to purchase this gun, I'd be a little gun shy um, because, uh, you know, you don't know if the ammo's gonna shoot that well. The raw rapid air weapons came out with the 357 two or three years ago. I remember Pecan Bayrami. Pecan, if you're watching this, I remember very clearly. You had one of them at Extreme Bench Rest a while back, and uh, and you had it outside with me at like 50, 60 yards. We shot it, and it was shooting like, they were shooting like 720, 740 feet per second. It just wasn't there. It was an arms race, because, uh, you know, the, 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 everyone's thinking bigger, bigger caliber, bigger caliber, best, better wind resistance, and everyone wanted it to be 5.7, but that was a short-lived project. For raw, I'm sure they still make them, but they just didn't. They didn't perform what they needed to do. They uh, they were grouping like that at 50 yards. The 30 calibers were destroying them with accuracy and competition. So the manufacturers abandoned it, and basically nobody bought JSB 35 caliber for a long time. But that could change us now because I heard. Well, of course they got it shooting. There's no way in hell they're gonna release a gun that it's not shooting. So. Why I dig this. All right. I'm not a big caliber guy. You guys know that. I've never been big bore. 30 caliber is really my limit. I'm going to try it out because if, it, if they got the accuracy better than the 30, then that's what I want to use. However, I don't think so. I think the 30 is still going to be on top of this one. But if you needed that extra, I mean, you're knocking down medium to larger game and you need that punch. Yeah, this makes a lot more sense. Here's the cool part. Here's what I like about this gun. First off, it comes with a longer cylinder. It probably costs more. I don't know what it costs, but with this and this, it's going to cost more. Okay, but the cool part is that you have an impact. So if the 35 caliber ate your cup of tea, then you can just outfit this for a 30 caliber. Um, you know, if I, don't, if I don't dig this, 300 bones later, I have a whopper of a 30 caliber with the long cylinder. And, um... I'm off and running. Probe, barrel, probably gonna need a new shroud. I think these barrels are 800s. Look at how far back these, I mean, you're talking barrel from here to here. Um, that's probably how they got that power and efficiency out of it. But it also looks balanced. It looks, you know, on point. I think an 800 millimeter barrel is gonna look <laughs> a little ridiculous, sound like the crown or a traditional rifle. But on this, uh, it, it looks the part. It looks, um, you know, Right. Okay, so that's the gun. Haven't even shot it yet. I got it yesterday, and um, yeah, uh, wait for the weekend. And the other thing that comes with it. 
Okay, so you guys know that I was involved with element scope process. Um, so what I have in my paw, you wanna say hi? <laughs> it's totally informal, this one's easy. Hi. This is my boy Levi, he helps me with stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, get out of here. Hey! <laughs> Leave me be. Thank you. Good. Please, get. Okay. So what basically I have is a nexus with what I call the clean reticle. I chose clean and dirty. I don't know if the marketing guys like that. I like to say the clean reticle is one without all the windage dots. And, um, and the dirty reticle is all the windage dots. You gonna stand there and just look at me? My daughter now. Um, this is the Cadillac. This is the Nexus. Well, the Cadillac right now. We might build a Lamborghini in the future. But um, for right now, uh, this is the Nexus and uh, it comes with some pretty slick packaging, some tools and a battery. This I like a ton better than stupid flipping scope covers, especially the like the hammock that goes on. And it's yellow. You just blew how much money on your scope and you're gonna put crappy yellow plastic in front of your... Okay, don't get me riled up. <laughs> this is a nice cloth cover to go over it. Um, my, my gripe would be that, um, you know, they can't make a soft cover that can, can cover the sunshade or that, or without, with or without the sunshade is what I'm trying to say. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess you don't need too much protection if the sun shades on. That'll offer some, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And this is a lot nicer, especially for travel, moving around. It's just a, it's more practical than some piece of plastic you're going to chuck in the garbage anyway. I think that the bulk of you will actually use this. And that's why we, we wanted it. We hate putting stuff in a box that you're not going to use. It's stupid. Uh, manuals are boring, of course, but this one will help you a ton. Matt Dubber wrote it. Thank you, Matt. He did a stand-up job on this. Just stand-up, bang-up job on this. And, um, yeah, it's a hell of a lot better than uh, the, reddit, uh, the the manuals you're used to. Matt wrote it. Matt's a shooter, and he wrote it. Not some engineer who never picked up a gun in his life talking engineer language. Um, you know, Matt's a shooter, and he, he wrote it in plain English and probably translated into other languages. Um, and then here's the reticle, which describes what I've done. Hey, that's me. Check this out. <laughs> There's a good looking guy right there, huh? So uh, that's my face and, um, and I designed this reticle. This is the reticle I have always wanted and it needs its own entire video. It really does. And I've actually made it, um, but that one needs to be edited down. So, there it is. Uh, I have not reinvented the wheel. I have taken the best parts of all the reticles I've seen over the years and put them into one scope. A couple new things, I think. Um, namely, like a, a circle that you can see through. I like that a lot when you're holding over, especially if you're target shooting holding over, because you can literally see a quarter MOA at 100 yards through that hole. At, a, at 100 yards, through that hole is one quarter MOA. And that's a real... Uh, nice dimension to know and there's also lots of other stuff and i'm gonna, <laughs> gonna um, go crazy if i don't uh, rein myself in here but i'll show you guys that probably on this channel in the near future the scope is the japanese nexus and it is top of the line if you haven't seen old cyclops joe review of it uh watch it and believe it because we took our time with this uh had a lot of avenues to explore and we kept taking the one that required the most work, doing it the most right way, all the way down to the box. I mean, everything about this is, is done the right way the first time. So this is gonna go on that, and I'm gonna have a great time tomorrow smacking paintballs with a 35 caliber and the kiddos. And uh, wow, 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 wow. Look at the size of the holes on that magazine. That's how big the ammunition is. 80, 80 grain, or 77 grain, yeah. All right, that's it, boys. Straight uploaded to YouTube, no edits. Um, hope you're good, and I hope you're safe, and uh, I think that's the traditional way we sign off now, isn't it? But I mean it. Uh, I hope you're good, and I hope you're safe. The 357 
uh, FX Impact and the Element Nexus with the MOA, what do I call it? That's the, uh, it's the 1C, 1C model, the clean. Yeah, I don't even know my own models. They name the models, not me. I know what I built. I don't know. I said goodbye and now I'm talking more. Um, what's this design going? Okay, EHR one C. Yeah, EHR. EHR stands for, I gotta say this, I'm sorry. Uh, exped expedited hole reticle. In other words, the whole damn reticle. This is a hunting one. And this is, uh, is also competition because, I'll explain, uh, because it helps you go from not on target to on target and holding your hold. So if you have like a, an eight MOA uh, holdover and maybe you're holding four or five MOA wind, the goal is to get your butt on target as fast as possible. Not counting hashes one, two, three, four, five, and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's shapes, it's more intuitive, it is more instinctive, and it is way less technical. It is for what I think is 90% of the shooters out there who are intermediate, like me. I mean, realistically, I am an intermediate shooter. I won some stuff and I can make great long range shots, but I don't understand all the fine points. I don't do three gun competitions, not my cup of tea. Um, so I don't know everything about shooting, but I do know quite a bit about shooting. Air guns, but scopes, I'm still very much intermediate, but I know what works. I know what I've liked over the course of my time. And I have put those things into this reticle and I am genuinely very, very proud of it. So, um, so don't be mean about my medical. <laughs> I'm kidding, we all have our tastes and I can accept criticism, so long as it is constructive. Uh, okay, that's all. Really goodbye this time, guys. Thank you for watching me and I'll see you later.